the Ty Cats Audio Network. This is ongoing coverage of Grey Cup Week in Hamilton, presented by Swoop Airlines. Continuing coverage of Grey Cup Week here on the Ty Cats Audio Network. Louis B with you, and uh, it was a great afternoon today at end zone and we'll let you know why in just a second but i gotta let you know that great cup week coverage on the tie cats audio network is presented by swoop airlines the official airline of the 108th great cup with swoop canada's ultra non-expensive airline you get sky high savings on flights plus lots of aircraft puns visit fly swoop to learn more and fly for less than cheap and listen to the tie cats audio network all throughout great cup week as in partnership with Swoop we're giving away two amazing prizes a pair of Grey Cup tickets and a pair of round trip flights to anywhere Swoop flies all you have to do is listen for the Swoop keyword we'll give you a different keyword in every piece of content we create this week so the more you listen the more chances you have to win go to tightcats.ca slash listen to win for full contest details terms and conditions as mentioned it was an absolutely fantastic afternoon at end zone bar and grill in hamilton it was the cfl alumni legends luncheon they honored the 2021 alumni of the year jason riley and bob kraus and they also had a fantastic round table discussion and we're going to bring that for you here on the tie cats audio network so here is that discussion from friday at the cfl alumni legends luncheon Okay, we have members from the uh, 72 team, the 86 Grey Cup team, the tw one in Vancouver, and the 99 Grey Cup team, which we won in Winnipeg. <laughs> no. no, that was Vancouver too. That was Vancouver also, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, we're gonna independently talk to each one of these players and get their uh, reactions to them playing in the Great Cup. Okay, we're gonna start with the uh, 1972 team. We have Bobby Krause. That's not mine. Tony Gabriel, Garney Henley. And we're gonna ask them a series of questions. I hope they feel about the Great Cup. Greatest strength and weaknesses of your concerns going into the game. Your strength versus the opponent. What was your biggest concern playing Saskatchewan in the 72 Grey Cup? I'll go with Garney here. Uh, I'm not sure, but I think it was Ronnie Lancaster, probably. I, I uh, agree. Yeah. George Reed. Reed. George Reed. George Reed. A uh, couple of Hall of yeah. Famers. You're right, and their defense was very tough. Very yeah. tough. Yeah. What do you think, Bob? The pick play. The pick play? Yeah, they always picked you. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. They had a, a, a very stodgy defense as well. We were tied, I think, 10-10 for the, most of the second half, right? And uh, Garney, Dave Fleming, and Tommy Joe were our main receivers. They were doing a great job. I think uh, Chuck, who had to leave to go to a Toronto appointment, he'll tell you, he and I had fairly good chemistry, but we, we never even looked at each other that 59 minutes. <laughs> that was a problem. But it was nice to be able to contribute in the end. You know, it, uh, it, 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 what a great combination of guys were on that team. Uh, you know, I got to go to Dave Fleming, and him and Ange were kind of close buddies, weren't they? Him and Dave uh, Fleming were both pretty good buddies on that team. So yeah. let's see what Bobby has to say. Okay, Bob, your greatest memory of that game. 1972, at home, playing Saskatchewan. My great, greatest memory was, well, of course, when I blocked a punt. Okay. That was <laughs> incredible. Yeah, we, 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 that, that, you know, and then we touched it again. But, you know, the, the greatest memory was we were two very, very close teams. And I really honestly felt a lot of empathy for the other team. I, I loved winning. Right. But I, I, it was one of the first games I, I felt so much empathy for. Uh, the other team, you know. You blocked two punts that game. I do, I blocked two. And Oh yeah, the, the blocked punch. <laughs> that, that, that to me. That, the, that's a turning point right there. Yeah, the turning it, point of the game. Yeah, the blocked was. punch. Yeah. Okay, and the last, the greatest locker room story you guys have, maybe before or after that game. After the game, in the locker room, at Ivor Wynn, what was going on in that locker room as Great Cup champions in your, home, your hometown? 
The one thing that I remember was, um, I'm, if Chuck was here, I was dousing him with champagne <laughs> over his head. But the one thing that I do recall, and it's been in the paper, I think, where they had Ange Mosca and Dave Fleming together, and Angie kissed Fly. We called him the Fly. Oh. On, uh, he, got, he kissed him. I saw on, on the lips. On the lips. Right? Wow, awesome. It was, it was great. I, 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 I wanted to be there, too. <laughs> Anyways, you had to be there. And once again, we're back. They're back. Yeah, again. baby. There we go. Okay, we're going to move on to the 86 team. For now, we'll come back to you guys. 86, then 99. Yeah. Okay, here we are. We got Miles Corral. All right, Bob. And Jason right, Riley. We don't have any defensive personnel here. Where did, where did, uh, where did Les go? Uh, Les, Les had to go home. Les had to go home, okay. Anybody else here from the 99 Grey Cup team from the, on the defensive side of the ball? 86. Um, 86 team, I'm sorry, 86. 86, here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, greatest strengths and weaknesses going into the game, 1986. The what? Strengths and weaknesses of each team. Oh, the strengths and weaknesses. Well, Levington was the big bad machine, and they were going to win no matter what. They were 15-point uh, favorites. So uh, we played the role of the underdogs, and uh, but we had a group of veterans that uh, wasn't scared of anything, and we had Grover Covington and Mike Walker, what? Ben Zambiezzi and Paul Bennett, Les Brown. Oh, Les was hurt. Well, we had a great defense, and we weren't worried about Edmonton's offense. Our, uh, our kicker wasn't too bad either that day. Yeah, Ozzy was pretty good that day. I but think he was uh, six for six field goals, and uh, yeah, he was pretty good. The ball pretty but good. he's just a kicker. But they blocked a punt on him. I can't remember what he's what just a that kicker. Was, but yeah, we a don't kick count kickers in games. <laughs> no we kicker. don't. No kickers. You know, we had a great defense. Yeah. Jason. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if we had finished a few more of those drives, Ozzy wouldn't have broke the record for kicks in a great cup. That's right. But, um, no, we, we, uh, our, our stepped strength, up. Mike, Mike our, played well the last two weeks of the season. That uh, total points game was the, uh, the biggest thing. Us getting there was the biggest deal, you know? <laughs> You know what, our he defense playing, he chased out Damon out Allen out of the game. The, uh, I think that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but the old line, guys, the old line, we only gave up one sack, Damon. And, uh, we, got, uh, and, we got Damon Allen Damon, here who uh, played on the 86. Yeah, Edmonton, Edmonton gave up about nine sacks, I think, and, and we uh, gave up one. I think one. Damon, uh, career throwing the ball, passing the ball records are, uh, and rushing the ball like 84,000 yards. Is like a, a combined no. combination record for all professional football. And then Anthony Cabillo's here. Anthony threw for like 76,000 yards in the CFL. And I think he's second right now behind, uh, behind Damon. But uh, I don't know what Tom Brady's got right now. No. I don't know. Okay. Right. But I, what I like about the 86 team, that we had so, many, so much controversy going on and tragedy. King, King Clancy had passed away that week before. Remember going into the uh, two weeks before. Um, it, it, it was King horrible. Clancy passed away. The entire team went to the funeral, funeral. and yep. we wore shamrock on our helmets yep. for the entire season. Yep. And we actually have a shamrock on the Grey Cup ring in honor of King Clancy. And it's on our on 1986 our ring. ring. It's on That's the Grey right. Cup ring, the shamrock for, for King Clancy. And then, uh, of course, Harold Ballard uh, was the owner, and um, the celebration we had after was quite moving uh, in that Holiday Inn. But the one thing I, I remember that was kind of funny was that somebody stole our video machines that whole week. Our, our uh, video uh, tape cassette players were stolen out of the hotel. So you guys couldn't even watch the game. Couldn't, couldn't go back and study the, the opponents because it, you know it was all gone. There was nothing we could we put them on. Okay, 1999. We got Rob Hitchcock, Andrew Grigg, hello. Uh, Danny hello, McManus hello, hello. was here. He's right here. Where's Danny? Where's Danny? 
Danny oh. Shaw. Oh, Trevor, come on up here. No, 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 no. Come on up. Trevor. Hey. Where were you? Trevor Shaw. Jesus. Slap back. Get your shit together, eh? We're, wa we're running Whopper right now. You, you know what you're uh, doing? Who else is here? Anybody else from 99 I haven't seen? Okay. Okay, first question to uh, Mr. Hitchcock. Greatest strength and weakness going into the game. Biggest concern. What was the biggest concern that we were worried about? Well, I can, I can be honest with you. Um, after losing the 98 Grey Cup to Calgary in the last second field goal, there was no weaknesses we had going into the 99 Grey Cup when we played them. So we went in, we knew they had a great team, but uh, we knew from day one at training camp, and, and these guys will attest to it, we said from day one that there is nothing, we're going to take nothing less than a Grey Cup win, and we did it. The offense performed, uh, and that, that receiver named Flutie played pretty well that day too, didn't he? Yeah, they're, they're okay. Yeah, they're not bad. <laughs> it was not bad. Not bad. Calvin Tiggle, defense was really strong. Joe Mumford. Nice crew. Okay, Andrew. Hello. Greatest memory on a big play of the game or one play of the game that, that was like a turning point? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I'll be honest with you. My biggest memory of the game was, so Paulo Spalo sent off to give you a little... And, oh, sorry, oh, I said it out loud. Oh, hey, oh. oh so I, I got a little backstory here. So Paulus, Paulus, and I were roommates. So Ozzy, the last time he won the Grey Cup was 1986 in Vancouver at BC Place. And he said to me, he goes, well, I'm doing the same thing we did then this year. And I go, well, what's that? And he said, we're taking a, a, a limo, picked us up, just the two of us, picked us up, drove us to, I don't know, 20, 20 seconds away, yeah. got out, go through the stadium, we get in, and he goes, we're good now. Ozzy's like, we're good now. Like, he was like, almost like this, calming. yeah, he was like a calming thing where he was kind of like, this is what we're gonna do, and this is how we're gonna do it. And he's my roommate, and believe me, you do not want me to tell you stories about Ozzy and me as roommates. Zero stories. I could start now, though, if you like. Uh, no, anyways, it, it, it was a complete, uh, we got out, of the, got out of the limo, got in, we we're the first two guys in the locker room, and he goes, this reminds me of 86, and he, I'm like, 86, I'm like, this is 99, like, I, what was I, like, 86? I might have been grade 10. Uh, it was insane, but it was like, this is what we're going to do. And when we walked on that field, we already knew, I think, as a team, flat out, we, we knew as a team that there's not a chance we're losing this. Put it this way, you should get asked these questions to Calgary, how scared they were to play us. Because after losing to them in 98, yeah. there was not a chance that was happening again. It was, it was, it was, and that was, kind that of was a, just a yeah. forgotten, you know, anomaly, right? Yeah, it, I, won't, but, I won't even talk how disappointed we all were in that Winnipeg and that 98. That, well, yeah, you know. we should have won that too, but, you know, I mean, we didn't. Yeah, and, we didn't you know, the next year. Well, Best team wins on that day, right? Trevor, what are your thoughts on, uh, like, the greatest... What, after the game or pre-game in the locker room, just what was going on? Anything jump out at you? Guys quiet or, cause I'm rarely in there. I'm always, you know, somewhere else. And never, I don't know what the reaction is to those guys. Mike, thanks. Uh, I remember Calvin Tiggle gave an unbelievable pre-game speech for us that really fired us up. But I tell you, uh, even prior to that, it didn't really matter what anyone said before the game because anyone who plays in the CFL is going to have aspirations to play in a Grey Cup game, right? You may get there, you may not get there. But when you do get there and you lose on the last play of the game, which we did against Calgary in 98, uh, there's no more motivation needed going into the 99 season. The uh, the amount of turnover in the roster that happened in between 98 and 99 was extremely minimal. We almost had the same crew going into uh, going into 99. 
that was always uh, important to try to keep the group together, you know, yep. and not lose too many free agents to other teams. Yep. And we, we'd always lose one or two guys back to the National Football League. Yeah. You know, we, at that time. So it was it was interesting on that. Hey, and Mike, quick, yeah. uh, if I don't mean to throw a shout out there, uh, you want to talk about late season airdrops that happened from the NFL? Yeah. We got Joe Mumford coming in on one side. Yeah. We had Tim oh, Terry. Timmy Terry was a great pickup for us. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Uh, it, it was a uh, certainly, you know, a nice little feather in our cap going into the late season the playoffs, and then certainly the Great Cup. I, I think Joe led the league in uh, sacks that year, too, you know? What's that? Put me back on the mic for two seconds. Here's the scoop. This is what it's all about. This ring is 22 years old. Hey. And everybody loves it. Right? Everybody's great. But you know what? 22 years is too many fucking years. Let's go, Cass. Let's go, Cass. Let's go, Cass. Let's go, Cass. Han, sit down before I snap your teeth. Well, we have one in between. 22 so, years is too long. Did, so anyways. Uh, did, did Coach Thank Lancaster you. give you a, uh, a big pep talk before the game? Ron wasn't much for that kind of thing. You know? well, uh, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie was never big on big speeches. Um, he expected excellence from all of us, as you know. Um, he just knew that we were in that locker room. And, and, the, and the way when he came in in, 90, in 98 with uh, McManus and Flutie, um, he just knew that he expected if you didn't follow his systems, you weren't going to be around. And during that game, he came in and just said, guys, you know what to do walked out the door, and that's all that happened. Yeah, I can remember it. Uh, you guys on the stage after the game, getting the cup from the commissioner, and Ron was just kind of standing off to the side, and I just kind of wandered over, and he, we looked at each other, he gave me a hug, shook hands, and said, okay, we did it. You know, we did it. We did it. We did it. We did it. So that was uh, it's one of them thrills of a lifetime, you know? So. Hey, listen, guys. Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah. Greg. Corp, Corpy, Greg and Grant, Greg and who Grant. own this joint yeah, right Greg, now. Thank you for your thank hospitality. Thank you so much of what you've done. Off the charts, dude. We'll talk soon. Anybody have a question for uh, any one of our? Uh, we got, we got uh, one, one, two, three Hall of Famers here, and uh, many. And uh, Marjorie, you want? <laughs> Greatest player you played for, against, played with or against? 1972 team. Here, 1972. Tim Beebs. Greatest player you played with or against? Angelo Mosca. We got Garney. Tony. <laughs> Garney Henley. Garney Henley. Greatest player. Bob. Bobby, greatest player you played with or against? Greatest Canadian right here next to me and the greatest American next to him. Got him right here, Garney Henley and Tony, Tony Gabriel. Okay, over here, 86. Greatest player, guys. 80, greatest player you played with or against in that great cup year of 86. Well, you know, we have a lot of uh, great players in Grover Covington. and. With? Paul Bennett and uh, Ben Zambiazzi and Dave Sove and uh, our defense was amazing but our offensive line we had to put a little ragtag bunch of guys together you know Jason and I were steady we had never missed a game and then uh, we had Dale Sanderson and uh, John Malinowski and but Ralph Schultz stepped up yep Ralphie stepped up and played amazing if anybody wants to watch that 86 Grey Cup there was nobody better on the O line than Ralph Schultz that day, and and you know what, we we did a great job protecting Mike Kerrigan, sure giving did. him a good time, and uh, you know Dan Hocklock stepped up when Walter the Bender Huck. got hurt, yeah, and we had Jed Tommy, big head Jed, Jed was a great blocker. Yeah, Jed had missed the '85 Grey Cup with yeah. a broken leg or yeah. whatever he had had, yeah. Yeah, so there was a couple of 
you know, was there superstars? Steve Stapler was probably as close, and Rocky DiPietro. And the Rock. Mike, Kerr Mer Mike Kerrigan. The Rocky left? Yeah, Rock left. Okay. But, you know, Mike Kerrigan had a great day, even though he didn't complete 50% of his passes that day. Yeah. Mike was a stud that day. He put the ball in Jelly Roll's hands. So, you know, our guys caught the ball very well that We've day. We've had a lot, a lot of comments on, like, Facebook and stuff from the, the Edmonton team from that 86 Grey Cup that were also positive that they talked how great you, you played against them and that you really knocked the hell out of them, you know? So. Well, you know, John Mandarich was a pretty big stud of a defensive tackle for Edmonton. And I'll tell you what, uh, I, got a, I got a roughing penalty because he threw, uh, he threw Marv Alamang down after the whistle by the horse collar very unceremoniously. So I frickin' just drilled him and, uh, you know, because I've always protected my teammates. But I got a call for a 15-yard major. But it was worth it because it sent a message to their defense that we meant business and it was a war in the trenches. It's Paul Clantney. So then it was hilarious because Miles told me that one of his favorite moments of the 86 Great Cup was when he was lying on top of Mandrich. And he said, what is your white, what does your mom think about your, your rainbow haircut now? <laughs> and it was 29 nothing at the time. So that's, yeah, that's was, pretty good we story. We halftime 29 nothing, I think. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. You guys, best, uh, best player. Best player, 99 Great Cup. Hey, Mike, well, I, don't, I don't mean to hijack your game. question, but a second ago it was best you played with and best you played against. And uh, I'd like to say I had <laughs> the pleasure of having Danny Mack and Damon Allen as my two starting quarterbacks, Damon with BC and Danny with Hamilton. Uh, as a receiver, how could you wish for anything better? But uh, I'd also like to say on the other end of the, the uh, spectrum, I never wanted to go up against Baron Miles yeah. and rarely had to because he was a corner. But we threw a ball to Joe Hagens on third and half a yard that was basically the play that got us to the 99 Grey Cup in the 99 Eastern Final yeah. in Montreal. And Joe Hagens caught a 12-yard pass over top of the best defender in the league yep. to send us to the Grey Cup. And uh, so, yeah, that's my story for I best. I remember Ronnie Williams making a hell of a catch on the sideline late in that game, too. You know, no doubt, that, absolutely, yeah. and I do not forget that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, my new favorite NFL player yeah. is Ron Williams' son. Yeah, he Edward is, is a, no, what? Uh, Deshaun Williams. Deshaun Williams. He's yeah. a starter yeah, for, the, uh, Denver for the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos. Starter. Yeah. Only been cut 11 times. Currently a starter, and uh, you know, enjoying life with the Denver Broncos. Thanks for that, Trent Trevor. What do you think, there, Rob? Best player. Best player I played played against. I would have to say Mike Pringle. Okay. One of the toughest running backs ever. Uh, best player that I played with. Besides Damon Allen, because Andrew Gregg. Damon was very tough as well, but uh, I have to go with Pringle. And my second best player to play with D-Mac. Andrew okay. Gregg. There you go. Andrew. Who did you lay out? This is I it. We're running, out, we're running out of time, no, so we got to wrap the, her the, up. What was the receiver that you laid out? Tyree Davis. Tyree Davis. Oh, Tyree my God. Davis. That guy, I don't know. <laughs> go to sleep. Anyways, yeah. uh, favorite player to play with? I don't know. I mean, obviously, Danny Mack and I are uh, off the charts friends. Um, him and I have been together for, you know, as, yeah. a, a, as buddies forever. But I also played with Anthony Colville for two years. Yes. I played with Matt Dunnigan for a year. I played with Ricky Foggy. Like, these are names that are yeah. crazy names, right? So, I mean... To narrow it down, obviously, because Danny's a friend of mine. Yeah, you just want to focus best, but, more on the great cup. But, but I, st I spent all night with Anthony Gobio last night because Anthony and I haven't seen on Southern Brother. He's just the most accurate passer ever. Bar none. And all those guys can take it and soup it up. But to be honest with you, the toughest player to play against, 
I'm gonna go ahead and say Calvin Sagal when he went to Toronto. Yeah. Calvin was a monster. Listen, you know. that was your fault. <laughs> so at the end of the day, Calvin Tegel leaves the Cats and goes to Toronto because this guy can't sign him. So at the end of the day, I love you, Mike, like a brother. You know I do. But Calvin Tegel was the toughest guy I played against. That guy, he just was a machine on defense. Defensive Anyways, player of the year. With Defensive you. player of the year. He is. Yeah, he is. He and and well-deserved. Yeah. He Anyways, was. thank you, yeah. bro. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, that's it, folks. We're all done here. We'll wrap it up. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Support the uh, the end zone. Great ownership. Drive home safe or wherever you're going from here. Everybody have a safe night and a great, great cup. Okay? And that was a roundtable discussion from the CFL Alumni Legends Luncheon. And once again, congratulations to the 2021 Alumni of the Year Jason Riley and Bob Krause. Okay, it's time for the keyword to enter for your chance at Grey Cup tickets as well as round trip flights to anywhere Swoop flies. The keyword for this show is end zone. Go to tycats.ca slash listen to win to enter and for all contest details, that's tycats.ca slash listen to win and enter the keyword end zone. Good luck and keep listening all week for more chances to win. Ongoing coverage of the 2021 Grey Cup Week is provided by the Thai Cats Audio Network and presented by Swoop Airlines. Subscribe, follow, and like to hear the latest from what's happening in Hamilton leading up to the Grey Cup.